Good afternoon, Chair and Vice Chair of Judiciary Committee. My name is Rachel Prusak, State Representative for House District 37. The Family Preservation Project has been funded for the last two biennia via the Budget Reconciliation Bill with an allocation of $400,000. However, it has never been part of an agency budget. This past session, HB 3300, a Judiciary <laughs> Committee bill requested by Representative Barker and supported by many of you on this committee, would have created the program and statute and fully funded it. HB 3300 also would have created a gender responsive office within the Department of Corrections since there's a high need to address the fact prisons were created for men, not for women that give birth, lactate, and menstruate. There is considerable work to be done in order to recognize the need for equity in women in prison, and their needs are fundamentally different. The bill passed on the House Judiciary Committee on April 9th, but because there was more work to be done on the gender responsive section of the bill, an amendment was drafted to remove that section and have the bill tightened to just the creation and funding of the center. This amendment would have been considered in the Public Safety Committee, but the bill never received a hearing. Many of you likely remember my advocacy for the Family Preservation Project during the session. I was heartbroken on the last weekend of session to discover that the funding was not secured, as were a few of my constituents. One of who is a mom that was in the Family Preservation Program went up Coffee Creek and attributes it to her not only being in college now, but having a healthy relationship with her daughter, and the other who's a well-known celebrated artist who volunteers her time at Coffee Creek. Despite my disappointment from the lack of funding, I am very excited to have the opportunity to be here with you today and ask for support of the program and its funding in the 2020 session. And also thank you for the past work that you've done for the women in the Family Preservation Project. As a nurse practitioner, I have served many vulnerable communities that at times fall through the cracks in our complex health care system. Some of the most vulnerable people in our state are children of incarcerated parents, they are overlooked, underserved, dealing with trauma, shame, and stigma of having a parent in prison. Parental incar incarceration is considered an adverse childhood experience, which as you know are linked to poor health outcomes later in life. There are ties between parental incarceration and physical and mental health outcomes, including increased likelihood of depression. Adults who as children grew up with incarcerated parents are less likely to get medical care when they need it are more likely to engage in risky behaviors compared to peers whose parents are not incarcerated. Research suggests children of mothers in prison internalize anxiety and depression, externalize aggression and delinquency, have feelings of confusion, fear, abandonment, and vivid memories associated with their mom's incarceration. More than 80% of women in prison had at least one child living with them prior to incarceration and are likely to resume parenting roles once released. These children are more likely to be placed in foster care. They are more likely to be incarcerated, 2.5 times more likely than if, dad, if their dad was incarcerated. And they are more likely to use the emergency room for routine health care visits. Based on research and best practices, Family Preservation Project provides a unique model for helping children cope with these experiences. This program interrupts the intergenerational cycle of families of criminal justice involvement, poverty, and addiction. More than anything, Family Preservation Projects helps mothers take ownership of their lives and changes the lives of their children, reducing trauma and providing support they often do not receive anywhere else. Bottom line, Family Preservation Project is providing critical services to incarcerated mothers, their children, and their families from across the state. These services are creating healthier families, healthier and happy children, and women that are more likely to be successful upon re-entering their communities. Savings produced as a result of the services are considerable, and this is one of the programs available at the Coffee Key Creek Correctional Facility that supports these disenfranchised children and families impacted by maternal incarceration. With a host of services based on national best practices, they range from therapeutic visitation to intensive transition planning. I respectfully ask that this situation be addressed and that we do not turn our backs on these women, children, and their families. Thank you.